Landlords in San Francisco are getting nailed with multi-million dollar settlements for breaking rent control rules. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing in Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's coming out of San Francisco. And obviously, San Francisco is a very, very tenant-friendly, anti-landlord place, okay? It's the extreme progressive left out there in California, and none of this should come as any surprise. So basically, there are landlords out there, and they're doing something that's called the move-in eviction. So one of the few exceptions they have, you know, that's able to help get tenants out of a property is if the landlord decides to move into the property on their own, right, with their, you know, for their, and make it their personal residence, they're able to remove the previous tenant. So this has to do with rent control because the previous tenants in many cases were under this rent control and the landlords were unable to raise the rent on them. And so by getting that tenant out of there, they're then able to, you know, eventually get a new tenant in there and put the rents up at market level. So that makes the property a lot more valuable. Now, what some landlords were doing, they were violating the rules and they were saying they were gonna move in and they really weren't. So, you know, I'm obviously, I am not in support of landlords breaking the local laws and rules and regulations. What I am in support of is not dealing with those laws, rules and regulations in the first place and investing somewhere where, you know, you actually have the freedom to do what you want with your property. Now, when these landlords broke these rules and they got caught, guess what happened? Basically, the city is, you know, throwing lawsuits at them and it's costing them millions of dollars. In fact, some of the settlements are higher than the value of the property that <laughs> where this occurred. Now, can you even imagine that? That's insane. So before I get into the article, though, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button. Maybe leave a comment down below and let me know if you were a landlord in San Francisco, would you try to game the system would you try to get past these rent control laws or would you you know p just play by the rules or what you know i mean there are a lot of things when it comes to these rules and laws etc that i don't agree with okay so i have a hard time being too critical of these landlords other than the fact that they should have known that it wasn't worth it and that the city really is going to go after them so you know they should have known that they, basically they couldn't get away with this so anyway this article comes from sfist.com and it says landlords getting nailed with huge million dollar settlements for sham owner move-in evictions and let's see what it says if they can explain it a little better than me Two record-setting settlements of more than $2 million apiece in recent months, where the settlement cost more than the house itself, are putting a chill on the old owner move-in eviction runaround. Evictions are way, are way down during the pandemic, primarily because they've been mostly illegal due, uh, thanks to certain local and state laws. This also includes the often dubious owner move-in eviction wherein landlords can evict tenants because they are they or a family member are moving into the unit and the owner sometimes generates an implausible number of relatives to evict as many rent controlled tenants as possible according to data from the chronicle owner move-in evictions peaked in 2016 at 417 of them dropped to 196 in 2019 and in 2020 during the pandemic there were but 29 of them Okay, so yeah, that, that's a little fact that I didn't realize. So the owner themselves doesn't have to be the only one who can move into the property, but they can do an owner move-in eviction for a family member as well. So yeah, that's an that's a, a interesting way, if you want to call it gaming the system, but that's what they're doing. But that Chronicle report notes the pandemic is not entirely responsible for this drop. Toughened owner eviction rules the Board of Supervisors passed a few years back increased the penalties on sham owner move-in evictions. And the Cron notes that in recent months, two record-setting settlements of $2.1 million and $2.6 million have spooked landlords away from the practice. In both cases, the settlement cost more than the house itself. 
Now, I, I want you to think about that for a second, okay? So property is extremely expensive in San Francisco, right? So imagine you have a property up there, right? And, you know, we'll, we'll just throw a number out there. The place is worth $2 million. So you do this kind of dubious, you know, kind of shady uh, move-in eviction thing to get that tenant up out of there, right? And yeah, that's a, that's a bad thing. I, you know, that's breaking the law. You should always follow the law, in my opinion, right? The law is stupid, but you should follow it, okay? But then they come back and they're like, oh, well, you know, you, you broke the law. And so the penalty is so extreme. This penalty is insane, okay? The property itself is only worth $2 million, and one of these settlements was for $2.1 million, and one is for $2.6 million. So basically, you had to buy the, you know, you could have bought the tenant an entire place and you know for the same amount as a settlement and you know what Th that's ridiculous okay so if you have a small landlord such as myself you're bankrupting them over this over uh, uh move out eviction that is so stupid okay and i i personally don't think that it's it should even be constitutional okay that sounds like an unlawful taking a property to me you know where you can't even evict this tenant but hey you know that's why i don't deal in places like san francisco because i don't want them to have control over my property i want to have all the control so yeah i mean this is an insane amount you know and i i know that they're going after these these uh two landlords in this case to try to you know send a message out to the other landlords but come on Okay, they have to, there has to be some kind of realistic number here. Okay, so in my opinion, you know, if they're going to, if, if this is a law and a rule, then the most that they should be able to fine or penalize somebody would be one year worth of rent because that, you know, that might be like, okay, well, you know, if the tenant gets, you know, they'd be able to go on, they'd be able to find another place and they'd be able to pay their rent at their new place. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've heard stories of where landlords in places like San Francisco have had to, you know, literally cut checks for $100,000 or more to get rid of some of their old tenants who just would not leave. And now I know why, because you could be facing penalties like this, and that, that's, this is even worse than paying the hundred grand. <laughs> oh, man. Insurance companies paid most of the money to fund these settlements and made the decisions to settle these cases, landlord attorney Andrew Zacks told the Cron. These extraordinary payments in cases such as these reflect on the difficulties that property owners face in the San Francisco court system. Insurance companies are reluctant to go to trial given the one-sided nature of local law and the risks if the owner loses. So yeah, that, that, it looks like their insurance companies paid it and I'm not saying that they should have gone to trial because in a place like San Francisco, they would have lost even more probably. I don't know. I mean, that's a hard one. Do you really think that they would have lost more than a, like a $2.1 million settlement in this sort of case? I mean, I don't think so, but hey, I'm not the insurance company. They are the ones who figure out all the odds and all the possibilities of this kind of stuff. But you know what it will cause, though, is if these insurance companies realize that, hey, we could be paying settlements like this out all the time or we could be facing lawsuits like this all the time, that will mean that for all the other landlords who weren't involved in this, their rates are going to go up and they might go up a lot, okay? It might be very, very, very expensive to insure a property in San Francisco going into the future because of nonsense like this. Not saying it isn't expensive now because heck, with all their property crime rate and all that, I'm pretty sure you know the, the <laughs> homeowner's insurance isn't cheap, but imagine it being even more. This is a unique San Francisco phenomenon thanks to legislation from supervisors Aaron Peskin and uh, Jane Kim that passed in 2018, which required landlords to declare under penalty of perjury that they or a family member did indeed move in and then gave tenants a three-year window in which they could sue if they thought the move-in was dishonest. Yeah, so they gave tenants a three-year window afterwards to uh, sue. 
a landlord and you know a landlord had to you know do a sworn statement under penalty of perjury i mean come on i mean if i was a landlord i wouldn't even bother with this because th you knew that something like this was going to happen now i didn't figure that an insurance company would settle for multiple millions of dollars but goodness you know these tenants are going to get a payout you know they're wealthy now because you know they basically hit the jackpot on some insurance company and you know this is the ridiculous situation you know i hate the fact that san francisco passes laws like this in the first place but you know we we've got a, a system too where you know people are always filing lawsuits and suing over ridiculous stuff okay why can't we just give the owners the property rights that they deserve and it just seems like no that's just never going to happen so yeah completely ridiculous i don't agree with this new california laws and i i hope that this sort of thing doesn't spread anywhere else throughout the country